This is section 4 where we're going to describe the decorator design pattern. In this section we're going to describe what is the decorator pattern. We'll talk about how to create forms with Spring MVC and Timeleaf. Then we'll show an example where we create a screen with selections for flower and woody plant and native plants. Then we'll see how we can create a responsive screen based on the previous selections. And then we'll see how we can collect data from the user and store those selections in a series of objects. Let's consider the motivation for the decorator pattern in our example. We have to keep in mind that plants are different. They have a lot of things in common, like genus, species, cultivar, and common name. But when we look at the types of plants, we th can think about herbaceous plants, like flowers, annuals, and perennials. We can think about woody plants, like trees and shrubs. Then we can think about vines and grasses and many other types of plants. These different types of plants have different attributes. If we're collecting plant data, knowing the type of plant that we're collecting, we'll define the attributes that we need to collect. So that attribute list will vary based on the type of plant, and this is where the decorator pattern comes in handy. So what is the decorator pattern? The name, of course, is decorator. This is a structural type of design pattern, not to be confused with the other design pattern types we have, which are behavioral and creational. We'll take a look at the problem in depth and then the solution, and then we'll take a look at an example implementation. This implementation will take several videos to create, so in this video we're simply going to start it off. What's the problem? We want to be able to add behavior to existing objects at runtime. And maybe there's some limitation where we cannot use inheritance, or we need some alternative to subclassing. We want to add these behaviors at runtime, and the behaviors might vary. The example that we'll see is that we can add a native behavior to any kind of plant. We can add a woody or herbaceous behavior to any kind of plant. So we can assemble this all at runtime based on the user's feedback. So one other nice thing about decorators is we, don't, we aren't limited to just one decorator. We can add multiple decorators to a class at runtime. A major advantage of using decorators with Spring is that Spring is configurable. So we can allow future developers, customers, and users to add functionality via decorators that don't even exist yet decorators that they will define and that they will put into our application through configuration. Now, how can we do this? We have to remember one major rule of design patterns and, and frankly good object-oriented design, and that is if tests are the enemy. If tests are the enemy because they oftentimes indicate that logic is in the wrong place, and they often indicate that if we need to enhance logic in the future, we have to change an if test inside of a class that we might not have access to. So when thinking about good design patterns, keep in mind it's oftentimes a good idea to try to get rid of that if test and solve this conditional logic through a design pattern instead. So the solution that we're going to have, we're going to create an interface called plant decorator. And this plant decorator interface is going to have several methods that each of our decorators are going to implement. So get label will be a label that the user can see and say, okay, I want to add the native decorator to this plant. I want to add the herbaceous decorator to this plant. Or maybe I want to add the woody decorator to this plant. The template is the actual little HTML fragment that contains these attributes that a user can fill out. And then process submission happens after the fact. After the user has filled out, this fragment is part of a larger form our decorator will be able to recognize what the user entered and parse it and process it naturally. Now, this all works hand in hand with several things we're using in this video series, including Spring MVC and Timely. Many times the class that we're decorating will implement this interface as well. In our case, that's not going to happen. In our case, what we're doing is we're essentially decorating this home controller, which is the controller that renders our page and decides what attributes we're putting onto our page. So we know that all plants are different. We see some shrubs here, some trees that are evergreen, maybe a tree that's deciduous. We see a coreopsis, which is a flower, which is gonna be a herbaceous plant, and then something called a monkey puzzle, which is a very interesting tree as well. So we know that all, all plants are different. We know that our decorator is going to provide a human readable label, some kind of HTML template, 
and a way to process the form data that a human enters onto a web form. Now, one potential expansion by using Spring is the ability to make these decorators configurable and extensible so that a customer might buy our software and decide to extend it with additional decorators and then simply use some configuration to make those decorators available. Let's start with a simple example. I'm going to take a look at our Eclipse environment that we've started already. So we have our Spring Patterns Eclipse environment, and I'm going to start by creating the interface that I promised earlier. So I'm going to right click on COM Plant Flashcards UI, and I'm going to say New, and then we'll say Interface. And this interface, we're going to call it Plant Decorator. Okay. Normal old interface, just a collection of methods. Now, it's always a good idea to add a bit of Javadoc whenever we create an interface because that documentation we can reference from the concrete classes that implement this interface. So, a decorator design pattern that provides attributes that are specific to a plant type or subtype. Now I'll tell you what, we'll control M so we can see this in high definition. Just one moment. Okay, uh, now we need to give it a few methods, a few simple methods. We'll say string get label. Okay, and I'll describe this as I'm writing out the Java doc because that's oftentimes the best way to describe it. So human readable label that will allow the user to decide whether or not to apply this decorator. Return a label that describes the decorator. Okay, a couple more methods we need. We're going to say string get template. Okay, and for this one, a little bit of Javadoc. HTML template that contains the attributes that a user may wish to populate for this plant type. Okay, return HTML template. Okay, and one more. Uh, we'll say one more is going to be the way we process submission. So we'll say void process submission. And by submission, I mean the data that the user adds to a web form that we're going to want to pull out and use to enhance or decorate our plant. So we will get this in a map string comma string format because it's essentially the name value pairs that you would see in a GET request. Params like so. Okay, Control shift o Organize Imports and Eclipse, and a bit of Javadoc on this. How to handle request parameter name value pairs of the submitted form. Okay, just like so. And we'll say request parameters. Okay, and save. Control m one more time. Uh, looks like I need to fix one more typo up here. Just make it a little bit prettier. There we go. And I think we are in good shape. Let's see what we need here. Uh, oh, okay. Missing one semicolon. There we go. And now we're in good shape. Now, I'm going to just stub out these concrete classes. We don't know enough information yet to provide the Git template or the process submission. That will come when we look at our next video, which is where we're taking a look at Timeleaf and MVC forms and how they're handled. This just kind of gets the conversation started. So right click and choose new, and I'm going to say class. And on this one, I'm going to say, like Woody plant would be fine. We'll just shorten that to Woody. And uh, add, and we'll say interface. We'll say plant decorator. There we go, just like so. We can do it right here in this form, or we can do it manually. It is a good idea to keep this in our UI package, make it easy for Spring to find. So you see Woody plant, Woody implements plant decorator. It has a get label, get template, and process submission methods. For the get label, uh, we can just return Woody plant. Okay, and save. Okay, easy to do that. So I right click and I say new class and I say herbaceous. It's tempting to say herbaceous plant, but the fact that it's a plant is kind of a given because that is what we are decorating. So herbaceous plant is something like a flower. So for uh, get label, we will say herbaceous flower. I'll say herbaceous plant flower. Now the next one's kind of an interesting one. The final one we're going definitely many more that we can do here, but the final one we're going to do is called native. And this means where is the plant native? Every plant is native to somewhere. 
Many times they're native to multiple places. But in our case, we're just saying, okay, do we know where it's native? Maybe when we fill it out, we do. Maybe we don't. So in this case, we're indicating that we know where it is native. So we'll go ahead and say return native, just like so. And you see, we've started things off. The next thing that we need to do, which we won't do just yet in this video, but we will later in the series, is we need to consider how to include these in our home page controller. I'll tell you what, we can go ahead and get a little start on that if I say private, list, and then what do I need as my generic parameter here? Because this could hold any of those three decorators that I just created. Well, the one thing they have in common is that interface. So I can say plant decorator, list plant decorator, there you go. And we'll say plant decorators. Uh, and then we can do a control shift O, make sure we import that list. Java util list is the one that we want. And then we'll say, this is going to be something a little bit temporary. Let me put a little comment above this that just says, the decorators that apply for our plants. Okay. Now I'm going to initialize this in, in the home page controllers constructor. I can say plant decorators equals new array list. And again, plant decorator. Okay. So control shift O again, organize imports and that will get us off to a good start for now. I say much more to come on this in future videos, but I just want to show that we have now created our class diagram. We've implemented our class diagram that was on this previous screen. So our interface plant decorator, and then three concrete implementations of that interface, native woody and herbaceous, and a list or a collection that's storing these plant decorators in our controller screen. So we've stubbed this out, much more work to come. And we have time to do that. 